Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday morning to you all. I hope everyone is doing well out there this morning and having yourselves a fantastic start to your Saturday and a great start to your weekend. Here to give you some updated information on what's going to happen weather-wise for your day. Of course, we typically do this. We'll extend it a little bit into our Sunday also, even a little bit into our Monday morning. Uh, kind of give you just a forecast for the entire weekend, basically. But we'll break it all down for you folks in great detail. You know, the good news is... You know, the, the severe weather risk are not going to be as high between today and Sunday and Monday. So, you know, that's great, but we are still going to run the risk for some strong to severe storms across areas of the country. So that'll be a heavy topic in this morning's video. We'll talk about a shot of cold air that's going to come down and kind of deliver a wintry feel across the Great Lakes region, even interior sections of the Northeast, even a little bit of Northwest flow, maybe all the way down to the mountains of West Virginia, for example. And of course, we'll speak on everybody and, and talk about what's to come. At the very end of the video, we will speak a little bit of our severe weather threat for our Sunday and a little bit into our Monday. And then, you know, just like I said, just talk a little bit on that wintry next few days across the Great Lakes region and the interior northeast. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. I did not have a chance to answer yesterday morning's comments yesterday afternoon. Typically, I'm able to do that. So, you know, I have a feeling by the time we get into tomorrow, I'll be very behind on comments. I'll, I'll get to everything. I'll I'll answer and acknowledge all the prayer requests. Um, We're lucky to have an awesome family here on this YouTube channel where we all pray for one another. So even if I miss your prayer requests, I, I mean, I can almost guarantee that somebody else is praying over it. But I will always get to those prayer requests. Those are very important to me. Um, but with all that being said, um, if you guys got anything that I can pray about, please put those in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray for it and a whole lot of other people an opportunity to do so too. So let's get rocking and rolling. So we do have some moisture in the Great Lakes region, uh, not really falling in a way of snow. I mean, it's starting to get deeper, you know, into March. We're almost into that time frame where you can almost call, call it late March. I always section out month uh you know periods of months the early mid and late and I, I would still consider this to be the middle part of march but you know as of right now you still don't have enough cold air for really any of this to fall as snow but that'll change over the next 12 to 24 hours and we actually have winter weather advisories up for sections of the western up of uh, michigan so we'll speak on that how much snow you'll get over the next 48 to 72 hours we do have a little bit of snow entering maine and then we have this big complex of storms that's starting to move off the southern coastline of Texas now. This, uh, you know, caused a lot of ruckus last night. Um, luckily, I would say yesterday's severe weather threat did not end up materializing too high end. Of course, it wasn't a huge severe weather day. Uh, we did have that upgrade to that enhanced risk um, yesterday morning for yesterday afternoon and evening. But let me know what you saw down there in southern parts of Texas. Didn't see any crazy reports of hail, but... I'm sure some areas got some pretty big um, hailstones out of some of them storms. So we do have some elevated storms out here in western areas of Texas. And, of course, we continue to have this uh, upper cutoff low, if you will, in the uh, southwest, bringing just moisture. And it's kind of spinning around. We got some rain outside the Las Vegas region. In fact, it might already be raining in Las Vegas. So it's like some rain just north of, of the city. Everybody else is pretty quiet. The Pacific Northwest has been kind of eerily quiet over the last few days after just getting storm after storm after storm we'll see if that changes over the next several days but that's what's going on right now the storm prediction center i mean we do have another day of severe weather we had this uh, we had an upgrade yesterday for today to a slight risk and that's what we continue to have we have a slight risk of severe thunderstorms this does include like Corpus Christi over to San Antonio almost over to Houston not quite to Austin Austin has that marginal risk uh, but basically in this area right in here, so, sort of like the southern sections of the hill country of Texas and just down here in south central and southern regions of uh, the state of Texas. And then we have a marginal risk that does extend a little bit into Louisiana. I would say that'll be more so for this evening. And then we do have that general risk of thunderstorms across the Four Corners region and uh, cer certain sections of states of the Four Corners region. Everybody else uh, pretty calm. What is this severe weather risk driven off of? Well, we do have that 2% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in the given location. So, you know, tornado risk is not non-zero. It never is if you have a risk of thunderstorms, but, you know, it is high enough to drop that 2% risk. Wind threat, we do have a 15% risk of winds exceeding 
uh, basically 50 knots or higher. That's 55 to 60 miles per hour. And then the hell threat. This is really what this is driven off of, I would say. I don't think we'll get an upgrade to an enhanced risk for hell, but you know, it might happen. But I think it'll stay a slight risk today as of right now. That's my latest thinking. But we do have the 15% risk in the yellow of hell exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. And then in the black outline region, we have a significant risk of hell, which when you have this, what we call hatched risk, that means there's a 10% risk in this case of significant hell, which is two inch in diameter, almost a 10 inch in diameter. That'd be awful, um, catastrophic. Um, but no, two inch in diameter or larger hell is possible with this, with a 10% risk. Excessive rainfall outlet, we have a slight risk of that, which means we have at least a 15% risk of excessive rainfall being met. Uh, in this area so we've already picked up a good bit of rain over the last couple of days in this region so you know it's probably already a little bit saturated out there we'll get some more thunderstorms as this evolves into sort of a cluster of storms and kind of runs throughout southeast texas today um watches warnings and advisories some red flag warnings in this hot pink so you know a little bit of a fire danger be careful up here winter weather advisories have been issued for one county in northern wisconsin and a few counties in extreme western sections of the up of michigan a little bit of dense fog with a boundary in place separating that warmer moist air with the cooler air and then we continue to have these winter weather alerts not sure how much snow you guys ended up getting if someone told me in the comments and in, in yesterday's video I, I missed it but you know like i said didn't have a chance to really read the comments uh, but let me know what you what you saw around the Denver area with this storm. But you will continue to see heavy snow across the higher elevations of New Mexico, Colorado, southern Colorado, Utah. And we'll see a little bit of snow that will continue even though the winter weather advisory has been dropped in uh, Arizona. So let's talk about the southeast first. All in all, a pretty quiet day. Maybe a little shower activity this morning in the Carolinas, but not a big deal. We take it to about midday lunchtime, maybe some sprinkles out there in, in areas of um, Florida. But we take it into this evening. We see the shower starting to move into Arkansas, a little bit into Louisiana. But the immediate southeast area is rather quiet. We'll get some showers and we'll move into the overnight hours around Jackson, just the Mississippi region. And then as we are getting into about uh, daybreak tomorrow for our Sunday morning, we'll start to see... Some more widespread coverage of some rain that will enter the picture again. You know, a little bit of rain kind of riding the Alabama-Florida line, some shower activity around Montgomery, Birmingham, and then we got these storms entering the picture. But, the, you know, most of the Georgia and the Carolinas is pretty quiet. Tennessee, pretty quiet. We'll take a little bit of a closer look, and we'll actually come back to this frame towards the end of the video when we talk about some more severe weather risk. But, you know, the daytime hours between Louisiana and Georgia and everybody included in this, basically, is going to be pretty quiet. It's when we start to move into the overnight hours, we'll get this cluster of storms, widespread rain and storms will move into Louisiana. Some storms in probably central to southern and southwestern areas of Mississippi. Like I said, some storms are possible down here, the Florida-Alabama state line. And then if we keep going throughout tomorrow morning, and we'll talk more on this here in a second, we do have some stormy conditions to greet you guys for your Sunday morning. So we move up here to the northeast. You know, pretty quiet start to your morning. A little bit of snow shower activity entering western Maine. But we carry it on to the afternoon hours. I think it'll warm up where most areas will just get rain out of this uh, little bit of energy in the atmosphere here in Maine. Just some rain showers, maybe mixing with a little bit of snow shower activity. And then this basically this big upper trough swings in out of, um, swings in out of Canada. And this is going to kind of bring a cold front eventually with this trough. But we do have energy kind of riding down, just lower pressure, which typically brings energy in the atmosphere in the form of some sort of precipitation. And we have a kind of a line of rain that will move through southern Ontario throughout the afternoon, the evening hours. And then eventually it'll move into western New York State and then northwest uh, Pennsylvania. And there'll be a, just a thin line of showers that'll move through Ohio. And some of these areas and kind of these higher hilly terrain areas could mix with a little bit of snow like south of Buffalo. It's very possible. Um, you know, one thing that I didn't realize was that there is some higher elevated regions right in here, um, sort of well off the coast of uh, Lake Erie right in here. I think there's some ski resorts too. But um, anyways, you know, this will continue. I mean, the Tug Hill Plateau might mix with a little bit of snow overnight. And then as we are getting into our... 
Uh, we hours in the morning of Sunday, these showers will just kind of cross all of New England, basically. And some of those higher terrains will mix with some snow. And then some cold air will catch up with it. And then as we get into tomorrow, we could get a, I wouldn't say a solid snow event, but some light to moderate snow, wet snow that'll fall across the northern terrain of Maine. And then this is when the cold air tries to get filtered in. And as you can tell, a lot more blue over here than there is over here. But we'll just get this kind of scattered burst of rain or snow or kind of a mixture of both that'll begin to work its way through Pennsylvania points north, basically. And, uh, you know, a little bit of cold air is now moving in at this point. And some of these will just be bursts of snow. Definitely a different day uh, tomorrow compared to today. You know, tomorrow will be more like a wintry day. Of course, it won't be frigid, but it'll be just cold enough for a little bit of some almost some burst of snow activity throughout interior sections of the northeast now you get a lot more of it in the great lakes region we'll talk more on that when we get to that frame but just some on and off snow showers across pennsylvania definitely new york state vermont new hampshire and maine and they could make it all the way into western mass maybe connecticut we'll see but certainly will happen in southern Ontario, and then we'll take it all the way into the middle of the night tomorrow night. But it's getting pretty far out. So between now and tomorrow morning, not a whole lot. Someone could get a slushy inch or so in Maine, and maybe some of the higher terrain of the Adirondacks, maybe a couple inches. It's once we start to get into tomorrow all the way into our Monday morning, we start to have an opportunity. It looks like they, they kind of changed the, um, the overlay of these colors, which is uh, pretty cool, actually, from um, the weather bill. So... That's pretty cool. Anyways, maybe a half an inch of snow in Buffalo, really tomorrow. A couple inches of snow is possible south of Buffalo and around Erie points um, east. And then the Tug Hill Plateau could get a few inches of snow. Adirondacks, kind of the same thing. And just the highest elevated regions of the Green and White Mountains, a few inches of snow is possible. You get into northern Maine, definitely a solid bet for a few to maybe as much as several inches of snow, depending on where you are. And we go on and take this all the way out to actually Tuesday morning. And then we have an opportunity to get several inches of snow as we get more so into our Monday for these areas. So we'll talk more on that um, um, here to come. So could be a kind of a wintry, you know, into the weekend and basically first half of all next week for the Northeast for sure. Just not any type of huge system by any means, like a Northeast or anything. But down here near Texas, this will be a heavy topic in this video, but I do want, want to mention we kind of have just some rain up here near the red river northern texas and areas of oklahoma and then we continue to have this spin we'll kind of zoom into this area with the storm activity will be ongoing here in a second but just want to take a broad look some of this rain shower activity will greet you guys for your uh saturday evening in arkansas little rock a um, little bit of shower activity in northern louisiana uh, but we're actually going to increase in moisture in kind of the northern sections of new mexico southern sections of colorado and this will fall in the form of snow some heavy snow could fall in these areas especially northern new mexico as we're starting to get well after midnight tonight into sunday morning so if you live in the higher terrain of new mexico you certainly will pick up some snow especially tomorrow morning uh, but then they go, there goes those clusters of storms that we'll zoom in on here in a second for like louisiana and stuff like that so but just to take a closer look at texas here and you know models you know are doing a high job if you know we kind of look at what's going on, on the radar they are picking up on this convection down here in southern texas but you know we kind of go a little bit too far ahead and we kind of go back to this it's picking up on this pretty well but the h triple r model does show and let's not focus on this this will be more excuse me elevated in nature you won't have as much thermodynamics and and, and really in place at all uh but you'll really have a, a lack of a kind of a favorable upper wind flow up here so you know there's not a lot of a lot of oomph in the atmosphere pushing these storms one way or the other so they'll kind of form uh kind of drift everywhere could be some large hail with this um and then we start to get more so into later this evening like 8 9 p.m some nasty storms start to develop in northern new mexico i'm sorry northern mexico my bad um and then the hill country of texas any of these storms right in here could definitely produce if you live in this section right here of texas please be careful again tonight with some nasty hail storms and then these will cluster up as we get closer to midnight cross kind of the rest of southern texas and then kind of basically slam the entire texas coastline throughout the overnight hours all the way into tomorrow morning and eventually all this will start to head off into louisiana but listen i mean as we get into tomorrow we could have some more nasty storms i mean here comes another cell this is like 
9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So the storms are done and then slams Houston again. So, you know, please be careful in this entire region right here of, uh, you know, Texas today. You know, this, this, this area pretty much right into here it needs to watch out later i mean we could get some storms like just early this afternoon but this area of texas certainly watch out for some uh hail storms and you know might not be a big tornado day at all but you don't want to completely ignore that two percent risk of a tornado threat so north central u.s the only area to really talk about is the great lakes region it's been pretty quiet up here for a while uh, last march was definitely different but um it's been a pretty quiet march so far in the Great Lakes region, but you know we see this huge broad area of low pressure up here associated with this upper trough and energy just swinging on all sides of it. So obviously more cold air on the western side of this that's getting kind of pulled down from the north. So this will bring cold air in throughout the day across the Great Lakes region. And then any kind of rain that you're dealing with right now will switch to snow by this evening. So it might be waking up, making breakfast, it's raining. And then by the time you get into dinner time, it's snowing and I definitely think the western UP of Michigan and even some counties in extreme northern Wisconsin are favored in this setup and this will continue but we will start to get some snow later on tonight even in all other areas of the UP of Michigan too and then as we start to get into Sunday morning kind of light to moderate lake effect snow uh, showers are, are just drifting off Lake Superior and then we start to get some enhancement of lake effect snow energy down here in lower Michigan and you know i don't want to ignore over here too because there is a flow way out here away from this low too that could bring some snow showers throughout the entire upper midwest north central u.s throughout the day just not a big deal as we get into tomorrow these become much more widespread across a lower michigan even could get some snow showers throughout chicago northern indiana northern illinois tomorrow uh, for sure some snow flurries are possible all the way as far south as northern sections of Missouri based off the HRRR model and northern sections of Ohio, Indiana, Illinois. Some snow showers are possible tomorrow, but once you get into lower Michigan and then southern Ontario, this is when you can actually get some accumulations. But check out this widespread snow shower activity across Minnesota and then the eastern Dakotas and northern Iowa tomorrow, um, tomorrow evening. Uh, just kind of a brief, maybe few to several hour period of it. And we'll continue to get this lake effect snow energy that kind of fires off Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, and uh, Lake Huron. So um, definitely kind of a wintry second half of your weekend up here for sure. Just just kind of reminding you that we're not quite at spring yet, which you guys certainly understand that. I know you guys know that March is certainly um, uh, definitely a, a winter month still for you folks for the most part. But between now and Sunday morning, not a whole lot. We'll, we'll start to add up the snow later this evening into the overnight hours into the Western UP of Michigan and a few inches of snow in some of these northern counties of northern Wisconsin. A little bit of snow in northeast Minnesota. Maybe a dusting in northern lower Michigan. But it's, you know, as we start to get into Mon uh, over the next 48 hours, the rest of the weekend, this is when the snow starts to add up in the form of several inches in certain sections of the UP of Michigan. And then we'll take it all the way out to, you know, Tuesday morning. A few inches of snow easily uh, will happen probably in western uh, lower Michigan and we could get an all-out several inch snowfall event up here so we'll take a closer look at some of these areas Duluth not expecting much from this uh, Hurley uh, 7 to 10 inches of snow between now and about Monday morning guys so definitely a, a sharp cutoff between not a lot and a whole lot so this will be a wet snow and then we take a look at most of the rest of the UP of Michigan Marquette good two to four inches of snow Houghton three to five um, and uh, you know just Obviously, not, I'm not going to say every name. Some of these names tr uh, trick me up, even though you guys in the UP of Michigan have uh, corrected me many times very nicely. I just don't retain stuff unless I say it nonstop. Maybe five years down the road when I'm still doing this, I'll have every single name just spitting it out like it's nothing. Um, but Newberry, that's an easy one because we have a Newberry here locally in South Carolina right out the road. Um, two to three inches of snow. And I do want to thank you all, guys. There's a lot of people on Facebook, Twitter, they'll send me links. Um, that, 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 and I bookmark all of them so I can go back to them when I get time. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that will send me links that kind of help me with punctuation with some of these, uh, towns and cities. They'll send me links with these, uh, uh certain mountain ranges in certain areas out west. So I just want to say thank you for that. A lot of people 
you know, really help me in, a, in you know, it, it, it's the it's the people that kind of like do it in a very rude way that, of course, is going to rub anybody the wrong way. But you guys are always so kind with helping me pronounce stuff because I'm not a naturally um, great sounding out person when it comes to words. Um, being on YouTube has really helped me with a being a better speaker. Um, it really has. It's been a blessing. It's funny how everything connects, you know, but still with just kind of firing off and uh, pronouncing difficult name, town names. Sometimes I overthink them too. So anyways, that's two minutes of rambling. Gaylord, one to two inches of snow. Not a whole lot, but this only goes out to, to 8 p.m. Sunday. I think we'll get a little bit more snow once we get past Sunday into Monday for certain, certain areas out here. So Western U.S., like I said, the Northern Rockies, the Pacific Northwest, Northern Cal, you know, after a very active stretch of a few weeks there, it's been pretty quiet. It'll continue to be quiet. It'll be very warm, too. Very nice warm day. We'll talk about that here in a second. We'll continue to get this spin out here with this upper low that continues to be in place. I mean, you can literally see the moisture spinning in this area. So, you know, Las Vegas will continue to get some on and off showers. Can't rule out a thunderstorm either. You know, same thing with Southern Cal. We'll continue to get this uh, favorable flow of moisture into higher terrain of New Mexico, Southern Colorado, higher elevations of the southern half of Utah. We'll continue to get some snow. We start to get into tomorrow and kind of already talked about this, but, you know, definitely some heavy snow will pile up tomorrow morning for sure. And uh, then we'll take it all the way into about the middle of the night, or late tomorrow evening. And it looks like some of this moisture begins to taper off finally. I think as, a, as by, by the time we get to the end of the weekend. But snowfall between now, Monday morning, several inches are going to pile up just in the higher elevations, really. Same thing with southern Utah. I'm sorry, southern Colorado, the southern half of Utah. And a little bit of snow is possible still accumulation-wise for some of these higher elevations of um, Arizona, southern Nevada, and maybe a little bit in the Sierra Nevada. So Temperatures today, all in all, above average for most, even with this kind of weak cold front to kind of move through. You're still warming on up. It didn't really do much to the temperatures. We have a pool of cooler air for a good chunk of Texas, but you know, there's another area that's still getting to the 60s and 70s. Enough fuel for thunderstorms, and it'll still be a nice day in the southeast. Finally get a nice Saturday um, across the southeast with no severe weather or rain, even though we got the rain yesterday. And I'll have a soccer game here in about an hour that I probably need to hurry up and wrap up this video with. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, no cancellations of soccer games. A pretty nice day across the southeast. You know, Texas a little bit different, but all in all, a pretty nice day. You're locked in below freezing, though, here in northern sections of the north central U.S. And a well above average day on average for everyone out west. I mean, it's really starting to warm up out west. I mean, a nice, nice day along the valley regions of, you know, between the coastal range and the Cascades. I mean... Seattle is going to be very nice today. It's going to be very nice pretty much all the way down the spine of the western U.S. So enjoy your nice, relatively warm day. So Tomorrow there will be a severe weather risk. I really confined to the Gulf Coastline. I mean, li quite literally. Um, I mean, it might rise all the way up to Savannah, uh, northern uh, Florida is included. And as of now, there is a 2% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in the given location from basically New Orleans through uh, just about, you know, pretty much Brunswick, Georgia. OK, uh, this does include some of the bigger towns and communities along the Gulf Coastline. We have to watch wind threat, 5 percent risk of winds, damaging winds, hail threat, 5 percent risk of hail exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. We kind of look at the evolution of this and we'll only focus on the deep south here. Waking up tomorrow morning, the only area that's seeing a lot of action is Louisiana. But as we kind of make our way into the rest of the morning, get to about lunchtime tomorrow, we'll have some storms kind of rumbling through more so just heavy rain up here in central Mississippi and Alabama, but we will have some storms kind of just cruising west to east all, all down the all the way down the Gulf Coast line. Some storms are moving to Mobile. Do not look that intense. Um, you know, they really don't. One thing I'll watch though is you see this other line of storms that enter your picture. If this trends a little bit further north, we'll have a you know a more substantial, I wouldn't say huge by any means, even substantial is a little bit of overkill with word usage there. But we will have a higher severe weather threat here, for sure. Um, but this big line of storms really just stays pretty far south out into the Gulf of Mexico. It does, on the latest long range of the AAR model, slam southeast Louisiana tomorrow afternoon. But once it gets away from that, it kind of drifts more so um, 
kind of, I would say, uh, east southeast. So it's drifting a little bit further south. And then, you know, we'll see if it kind of gets its act together as it heads into the Big Bend region of uh, Florida. But I think the worst of the severe weather is either going to be like right up against the, the coastline of the Gulf or right out in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see that actually here by looking at the updraft Felicity Swath. I mean, there could be a nasty line potentially. Some of this data could change, but right off the coastline of Louisiana. But I think for the most part, it does stay off the coast. But I do think you need to watch if you live right up against the immediate coastline. So last thing we'll speak on very briefly, you see this big blue blob here. This is a huge area of low pressure, upper trough swinging down. There's our upper low that's not going to get attached to this huge northern stream energy. But this huge area in blue, and this is around midday tomorrow, it's going to bring just a shot of cold air and with energy associated with it just because it's a huge area of low pressure. And as it digs down, you have just energy just wrapped in with it. This will kind of continue to dig down into Monday all the way into Tuesday. This will bring a shot of cold air with it too. Some sub-freezing mornings, a couple or a couple mornings are possible as far as south as the southeast. I mean, I think they're going for around the freezing mark here. Uh, for a morning early next uh, week. So, you know, it's still March, guys. We're, we're still going to get some freezes. We can get them all the way into April here in the southeast. So we certainly can get them even later into the year for the northeast and areas further north. But this will swing down. And after that, it, we got to figure out some things. There's a, there's a low showing up here. But, you know, really we should just focus on what's going to happen between this weekend and early next week. And with this huge area of low pressure that digs down with cold air associated with it, I do think we'll get a little bit of rain Sunday across areas of the deep south, southeast, like I just mentioned. And then this low will head on off into the Atlantic for Monday morning. Cold air will drop down. And this would be a prob probably a pretty solid look if it was January or February, but obviously it's not for the south at least. And then we'll just have a lot of energy associated with this area of low pressure. You see these blues and stuff right in here. Uh, you know, we'll just get a lot of lake enhanced moisture, a lot of energy that will fly over the Great Lakes region, get enhanced, some northwest flow actions possible. But you notice out west, it's, it's pretty quiet, guys. Not a whole lot's entering the west, uh, but we'll continue just to get kind of a wintry, uh, I think, start to your week next week. You know, we get these areas of snows, I think light to most moderate snows. No, what I'm saying is no huge system really develops, at least in the short to medium term. Now, we do watch some low pressures here and there. And then we kind of enter a, a pattern next week that's kind of zonal. You notice these, this 540 line is kind of, I know it's not moving completely west to east, but it is kind of more just straight rather than, rather than like buckling like this. Okay, it's going more so like that. So we call that a zonal flow. And this kind of develops, which means for the most part, there's no crazy weather. Um, you know, when you get buckles in the jet, that's when we can have, you know, some troughs that can bring a lot of nasty weather. Uh, but, you know, I really think, you know, as we start to get into next weekend, we need to watch a couple things with a coastal load that keeps showing up on models. No cold air to be found, but it could still pack a punch. And then as I, you know, we start to get into next weekend, it could get active again out west. And that's when we start to watch some things. We might enter a several day period where it might quiet down a little bit. Won't be that crazy of weather. March, I would say, is, is we've had some severe weather events. We had that awful event that happened in Ohio, you know, obviously two days ago, right? Um, you know, it's been weird. It's almost like severe weather season has just completely skipped over the deep south. That's not the case. I'm not saying that's happened. But, you know, if you compare this March compared to the last literally three marches, we really haven't had any crazy severe weather events like that moderate or high risk, really even an enhanced risk so much. I mean, we have had a couple, but, you know, if you compare it just to the last three years, it hasn't been as crazy in the deep south. But, of course, we got April, too. So we'll continue to watch things um, and uh, see how things unfold. Thank you all for the people who continue to view. Tune in. And uh, thank you all for the support. You guys have a great weekend. Hopefully no crazy weather affects you guys. But, you know, I probably won't have a video um, this evening. Uh, a very, very busy weekend out ahead of me uh, with some things. So I'll probably be with you guys Sunday morning. God bless all y'all. Love y'all. Appreciate the support. You guys have a great start to your weekend.